Well, Snifferblots, we've arrived. From the Barbary Coast to Knob Hill, this one is a favorite. It opens on Gilligan and the Skipper 2. Oh, wrong show. Sorry. In San Francisco, Annie O'Toole is cooking for her father, Kevin himself O'Toole, who is sneaking a nip off a bottle. She has eyes in the back of her head and catches him, just as Swede Lundberg arrives and announces that he struck it rich in Nevada with two claims. Annie's father wants them to go to Nevada and bring the loot back to him so he can stay home and nurse himself with uh, li liquid happiness? Swede wants to sell. Annie wants to go to Nevada. All of them. With three different opinions, what is there to do? They compromise and do what the woman said, of course. Her father warns that he'll die if he sucks in that heathen air. Flash forward to some unspecified time later, and he's gone and done just that. The Cartwrights are involved in a mining camp brawl at Washoe Diggins. The boys and Ben are trying to establish order just as Annie comes riding in with her wagon, consisting of a stove and the body, dead body of her father. No, that's not a joke. Did, did she drive all the way from San Francisco like that? Or did he die on the way? Or what, what's going on here? I guess they forgot that they hired a sheriff last episode, because I would think they'd be required to explain that one to him. Or some law person between San Francisco and Virginia City. I don't know. The pitiful way Joe looks and tells Ben that there's a dead man in the wagon is really cute and kind of funny. They remind us that he's still a kid. She says she was cooking hotcakes and uh, her father choked to death. Haas asks if he choked on the hotcakes. I mean, that's fair. She did kind of make it sound like that. As an aside, that's just another name for pancakes used in this show. Later on, they call them flapjacks. Some of you might know what I'm talking about. She says she's proud of him for finally doing what he said he'd do. I guess in death, he finally made her proud. Adam offers her the hospitality of the Ponderosa after hearing about her association with Swede Lundberg. Maybe he thinks the other miners might judge her by her relationship with him. She turns him down and plans on staying right where she is, in the mining camp. Hoss buries the body before they get the claims sorted out, and Adam points that out after he comes by and sees it. Meanwhile, Ben is appointed the judge in a miner's court. I wonder what they might do with that later. Adam offers Annie the money to return to San Francisco in an effort to avoid trouble. When he sees how much Hoss likes her cooking, and how the other men are looking at Hoss liking, their co liking the cooking, he decides to offer her a partnership in a restaurant where she does the cooking and he supplies the food. Haas's little comment about how Adam always knows what's best is a sweet snippet of the older brother hero worship that we'll see more of next episode. Annie agrees to go into business with him, and he makes it clear that it's only until she gets enough money, putting his foot down when Joe arrives with a second wagon load full of food. After confronting her about it, he discovers that she also can't write or read. She asks him to teach her, and he agrees. They don't really follow through on this, so I guess he taught her in the middle of all the chaos, and they just did it off screen. I don't know. She calls him a snifferblot for the first time, and that becomes the episode's catchphrase. Adam narrates at some points in this episode, telling us that Annie had enough money within a week, but that she didn't have any plans to stop. She's found a knack in raising the prices as it gets more popular. In his narration, Adam says that he decided that it was time for them to return to the Ponderosa, which kind of stood out to me. I'm thinking that if Adam had gotten to run things all the time without getting pause okay, Purnell might not have left the show. At dinner, Hop Singh is in a huff over Annie's cooking being so loved. That's another theme that they keep using throughout the series. The Swede stops by to the relief of Adam, who tells him that they have a mutual friend. Swede quickly does away with any idea that things are settled with his return by telling Adam that he sold one of the claims and has no idea which one it was. The Cartwrights head back to the camp and meet with trapdoor Gregory Spain. He says he owns number two, the one that just happens to now contain the body of Kevin himself O'Toole. I guess Adam was right about waiting earlier. You're right, Hoss. He does know what's best. Annie says that the Swede sold the claim for a bottle of whiskey. He corrects her that it was a whole keg. Trapdoor Greg wants to move the body and the restaurant. Annie chases him with her skillet while letting us know that her father sprung trapdoors for him while he was alive, for which he was only ever paid in whiskey. Kind of understand why she's upset. 
Adam calms her down and gets her uh, tells her to get the claim notice. When she returns after a little bit of time, they have two claim notices that both say claim number two. Hmm. Of course, Spain accuses her of forgery. Once the room is cleared, Adam accuses her in private and shows her how Roman numerals can be changed. I've never met a Roman in my life, she says. Sorry for the really crappy accent, Ida. She does the sign of the cross when he isn't looking, but he seems to already be on to her, kind of snickering behind her back. She visits the grave and tells her father that his resting place will not be disturbed unless Spain pays for it. Turns out Swede marked his initials on the handle of his tools. Haas says that he used those same tools to dig the grave. Annie rushes to feed everyone before they go looking and is seen by the audience burning some tools that seem to have some writing on them. Haas tells Spain that he should just use the other claim when they don't find the tools. Adam suggests the same thing to Annie and tells her the grave can stay before he looks inside the stove and sees the handles of what were once tools. There's such a shortage of wood around here. Sure there is. When they visit Ben, he informs them that the grave is on the richest silver strike ever found in the Washoe. Spain visits the restaurant and holds a gun on the patrons, then lights a small charge of powder, just enough to cover Hoss's food in rocks. Bad idea to mess with Hoss and his food. The room erupts in another riot. It's like the guys don't have enough to burn their energy. They win and throw Spain out bodily. In the next scene, Ben chastises them for it, and Spain informs them all that they only had ten days to make improvements to the mine or the law of abandonment kicks in. Ben decides to hold court, and Adam agrees with him. Ben fires back that he has no right to think. Pa, it's me, Adam. As in, you know, the one who thinks a lot. Ben says he's going to fine him for trying to influence the judge if he doesn't zip up. Annie just has to keep up, keep on going, and says aloud that they should buy themselves another judge. Adam covers her mouth before she can call Ben a snipperblot. Adam and Annie talk alone, and he tells her that it doesn't look promising. She begs him to help her, and he agrees. She kisses him, and Swede walks in, and they argue, and then he leaves in a huff. Adam has already agreed to help, so, in the following scene, when she's called to testify, he looks around awkwardly and doesn't want to come right away. Okay, so this is one of those scenes that is cut for time in some channel viewings, and it doesn't hurt the episode at all. In other episodes, they cut some really good scenes. In this one, this scene's really good. they really good to cut. It's really awkward, and it honestly helps the episode to get rid of it. I guess they were trying to show us that the confrontation with Swede made Adam rethink things or something, but it's just so awkward. It's totally unnecessary because he then goes up and proceeds to call Haas to testify and asks about the grave. Did he just think of that? If he had already thought of that idea, then why did he hesitate to help Annie when he had the winning ticket right there? Adam and Annie win the case, and Spain offers to buy the claim for $5,000. She declines, and he approaches her again later for seven and then 10000 She tells him she might consider it for twice that. When she, what she winds up getting is $25,000 plus 5% of the gross take of the mine for the rest of her life. She tells Adam this after he comes to visit her once he hears rumors about them getting married. She corrects him and says she wants to marry the Swede, who said he was going off to Africa after their little spat. Adam does the Cartwright thing and finds him all the way in San Francisco, sobers him up, and the couple gets married. Spain pays for the wedding, and Virginia City gets its first fire engine. They move the grave and find another strike on the other claim, to which we get a really upset Adam face. He's also wearing this really nice brown suit to the wedding, and then afterward when they move the grave and find the new strike, we never see him in it again. Sweet and Annie go to Europe, then come back and settle in a mansion built on the road between Virginia City and Reno. This one is beloved by fans, including me. Ida Lupino and Alan Hale Jr. do a great job as Annie and Swede. She has great chemistry with both Alan and Purnell. Henry Lasco is funny as Spain. 
He's a bad guy, but is inept, and they play that for laughs. It lands very well, and that's something that doesn't always work. It's fun, and Adam gets to be sarcastic and roll his eyes a few times. Hoss and Joe are playful younger brothers. Ben is warm and also tries to help the miners, and Hop Singh gets to threaten to quit. But by the end, he's working with Annie. It's fantastic from start to finish, and I highly recommend it. Adam gets to be sarcastic and roll his eyes a few times. Hoss and Joe are playful younger brothers. Ben is warm and also tries to help the miners, and Hop Singh gets to threaten to quit. But by the end, he's working with Annie. It's fantastic from start to finish, and I highly recommend it.